So we're back and working on prototypes. And we've gotten through the definitions of how you put these things together. We've gotten through uh, uh, proto declare, program interface, and we've looked at the field definitions. So now let's look at uh, those field definitions inside the proto interface and how we connect them to the internals of a prototype so that the goes into's and the goes out is have somewhere to go. And, uh, in case you're not familiar with that jargon, that would be a goes into and a goes out of. Do you guys get that term in any here? <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll study that. Okay, so is and connect. Um, and in fact, before we drill down on that, let's let's get the interface up. This is, uh, I think, working with X3D Edit at least can really help on this guy. We had a uh, prototype that we looked at in the last session, Art Deco prototypes, and then we had our three different prototype definitions, and then we changed uh, the material right in class. The material that we were using. We replaced it with a proto instance itself. So let's call up the editor and boom presto, this time my machine is cooperating and we're editing that proto instance. And we can see that this interface is actually pretty darn simple. There's not a lot to it. You can give it a name and then we can give it field value initializations. And so uh, What's, what's kind of fun about this is uh, those names right there, we don't have to type them in. You can type them in, but notice that the editor is proto-aware, so it's looking around and saying, if I find any proto-declarations or if I find any ex external proto-declarations, then I will uh, uh, turn those on, or offer those to you, so you don't have to worry about mistyping it or misreferencing it. Let me pause for the cause here. Jeff, uh, you did the sound check? Sound check. Right. Yeah, we're good. Okay. If you want to cut that, great. But sorry to call you. No worries. Uh, do we have any positive feedback on that? Like the mic blinking or anything? I guess we don't do I have uh, bars on. You can't see them from where okay. you're at at the bottom of the display. They can be levels. That might be. I would, why don't you add that to the wish list for a report uh, that future equipment lineups include? positive feedback. Like I've got positive feedback right now of the video working, but I don't have positive feedback of the audio working. Okay. So maybe we can get some kind of audio rig where, there, where it is. I can rig a, a larger display that reflects the meters on the No, line. no special effort needed. We're on the home stretch. Okay. Just thinking Looking about sure. our report and lessons learned. Okay, so thanks. Sorry to pr provoke an interrupt in the middle of the segment here, but I'll give you a clean start up again. Okay, cool. Okay. Okay, so there's our proto instance, and uh, uh, this one was uh, easy because the prototype that we're using didn't have any parameters. We just wanted to use it as is. It captures that long set of complicated numbers used in a particular material. Then we're all set to go. So let's now look at uh, what does it mean to do an is on this stuff. Okay. Here we are. Okay, so is and connect. Uh, reminder, the jargon, the terminology in the XML encoding here for X3D is a little bit different than classic Vermin. Classic Vermin. The functionality remains identical, however. So we're going to focus right now on the jargon with X3D. So we use is and then connect definitions to say which nodes inside our prototype are connected to which interfaces at the top of our prototype. So it's like saying this interface is connected to this field in a node. And then this interface is connected to that field in another node. 
Okay, so this is uh, how we can make sure that our interfaces have somewhere to go. Not just for the goes intas, the inputs, but also the goes outas, the outputs. And so you can sort of think of these as similar to routes, okay? Where routes pass events, well, inside your proto declaration, these are the connections for where events come to. But we don't use a route because it's a special thing. It's a prototype interface. So we use the isConnect mechanism to say it's even stronger than a route. It is connected. It is the same thing. So you can think of them as the identical functionality, the identical entry point into your declaration. Okay? So uh, you can have more than one connection uh, per each node and per each field. So, uh, so let's clarify that. Per node and per field. And why don't we fix our English a little bit. We'll say multiple are allowed for each node and for each field. And that's both in and out. Okay, so very flexible. We can hook up anything we want. So if the is collects it, then the connect is where we define each individual connection. The is does very little other than hold the connects. Okay, the is only holds the connect elements. And so, uh, let's, let's look at an example uh, before we drill into this one. And I think, uh, yeah, this is the one where it's, it probably helps to jump back and forth between this slide and the next slide. Because on the next slide, we give uh, an example of this. All right, and so here we see our is and our connect definitions. So there's our is, and then here are our connects. And you can see what we've done is hook up three, five, six fields, basically all of the fields of the material node and connected them up to where they belong. So up here we have uh, the different proto fields of diffuse color, emissive color, specular color, transparency, shininess, ambient intensity. Okay, so here they are referenced right down here. And it so happens we use the same names Or where do they connect up in the node? So let's switch to yet another color here. So for this node, its fields of diffuse color, emissive color, specular color, transparency, shininess, and ambient intensity, those guys are connected right there. Okay, uh, now uh, there are a couple of interesting points here. Before I move on, what do you guys think of this uh, highlighted picture? Does that help uh, draw the connections a little better? Yeah. Okay, so uh, Chris, please give me uh, an action item uh, to uh, put a drop down in this slide that highlights these things just like that. Okay, now. Uh, 
let's back up the slide then and let's review what it's saying here and we can go back and forth between the actual comment and the slide. Okay, so what did we just see? We saw that the each name field is connected to a prototype field. Okay, so that name field is in the local node inside the proto body, and then this prototype field is in the interface. Okay? This syntax, this construct is, is connected, is only legal when we use uh, prototypes, okay? So, if you use it anywhere else in the scene, it's an error. And then uh, we traced out color by color that each connect definition is the connection between a given field within the local parent and the corresponding field definition in the interface. All right, where we do the outsides to the insides. Okay, so this is uh, pretty interesting then. It seems a little clumsy at first, and, and maybe it is, but it's definitely better than uh, routes because routes tend to imply that something's happening there, something's going on, whereas in our case, we just have, uh, they are the same. They is connected. Each one is connected, at least. You can use it in a sentence. So don't think of it as routes. Routes are when nodes are connected to others. Instead, this is saying certain fields are part of the interface. Now, I'm overstressing this maybe because, for one thing, the names must match. Well, that's pretty logical. I mean, our routes, our def and use, they have to match. So that's maybe not too surprising. But what else? Uh, I get to use one of my favorite words now eponymous. You guys encountered that word before? Maybe in the XML class? Uh, eponymous. You've heard of synonymous, anonymous. Uh, there are others. Uh, eponymous means it has the, something has the same name as what it is. You give it the name of, of of what it is. So it's like if you had a dog and you gave him a name of dog, okay, or you had a cat and called it cat. Not, not that cats really care about their names, but, but people might. Uh, identical eponymous names. So what does that mean? Well, let's take a look at the next slide. Well, here it is, right here. Diffuse matched diffuse. Emissive matched emissive. Specular color match specular color. Transparency matched transparency. And then finally, shininess matched shininess, and ambient intensity matched ambient intensity. Okay, so eponyms, they have the same identical name. Could you have changed it? Yes, you could have. We could have instead said, uh, well, I don't want to use the same name. I want to be 100% 100% clear about what thing is where and the difference. So, we might have called our interfaces up here diffuse color two, emissive color two, transparency two, etc. And then we'd have to do the same thing down here. Okay. Uh, they wouldn't be named the same, but they certainly would be connected the same. As long as those match one for one, then you're good. Okay, so since we're so fussy about names and we usually like to say name it uniquely so there's no confusion, why did we break that rule here? Why did we say There we 
go. Maybe not. Clicking away here. Let's back up. Okay. Why did we say identical? Okay. Reason why is because conceptually they are identical. They are hooked up to each other. They have to have the same type. They have to have the same access type. That means if there's initialization value at the interface, there's none inside. Okay, because they are the same. Each one is connected. Okay, so this is certainly a style criteria. As, as you become more expert in building your own X3D scenes and building your own prototype extensions, you'll probably come up with your own style. We found that this is an okay case to, to break the uh, unique naming rule, design rule, and say, okay, we'll make them identical. We'll make them eponymous if you want some uh, fancy, fancy uh, vocabulary to use here. Okay, and, and then conceptually when you're thinking about the prototype declaration, when you're building it, when you're working about the functionality, there's no need to go, well, am I talking about the transparency one field or the transparency two field? Well, answer, quit worrying about it. They're the same. Each one is connected. Okay? So that's how we came up with the prototype fields connected into a node, and then which ones in the node? Well, they must match the node as it is defined. And so our isConnect does that wiring for us. If you want to name them separately, please do. There might be good reasons for it. It might be that these are also elsewhere in the scene, that you're connecting the field multiple times. That's a lot. Multiple isConnects to a given field, multiple isConnects to a given interface. Very flexible design. Okay, what's next? Well, here are the panels that let us work with that when we're uh, building our interfaces. Okay, and so the first one, the is editor, well, it couldn't be simpler. Why? Because all an is does is hold connect tags. And I'm, I'm a little tempted to say uh, it depends on what the meaning of is is, but that, that that's that's already been used by somebody, and maybe maybe we shouldn't repeat that one. But uh, uh, in case it didn't come up on the on the on the microphone, there was thunderous, uh, uproarious laughter in the background here. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, uh, and then, uh, but but what I did do was at least list. I mean, we could have skipped having an editor completely, but it's, oh, we'll put we'll put something there for you in case you want to edit it. And so we popped up the rules for when do you use an is. And those rules are, uh, again, quite simple. It's only within a protobody. You will not find it anywhere else in the scene graph, at least not legally. Uh, and it has to be the first child of the parent node. So if you're ising to a, a transform, for example, before you get to any of the transform's regular children, you would first need your is and then within the is, we've got our connect elements. So those are the rules. So all it does is pop you up a little reminder there. But it's a little more interesting then is uh, the connect editor, because this is quite similar to route in that we're connecting two different things. Oh, and they're both named. Gee, wouldn't it be nice if our editor prompted us with the correct names so that we could make sure they work. So sure enough, we reuse some of that functionality you've seen before in the route editor, and it will tell you uh, uh, not only what's available, such as, okay, enabled is the field we want to connect, but if we're selecting another one, it will tell you that Gee, uh, enabled is the only one that matches. Enabled is the only one we're going to uh, uh, keep in the black. All the rest are red because either the type mismatched 
SF color is not the same as SF bool SF boolean. Or the access type mismatch. Input is not the same as output. Okay, so this is a uh, pretty handy. And there are tool tips, so let's go down into X3D Edit and check this out. And I'm going to switch now to a different scene in X3D Edit. Uh, why? Because our proto declares for these guys, for the Art Deco nodes, were too simple. We had no interface, therefore there's nothing to do is connect on. So let's find a different node to check out. We'll look at Material Modulator. Okay, so if we go to Material Modulator, and you examine this scene, well first of all, what does it do? If we look up in the XJ3D window, and watch that animating, here it goes, you can see, oh, it's uh, modulating the material color, and we can see our sphere blinking and, and switching color very rapidly, okay? And then what else do we have? We have a prototype interface that exposes all of the fields that match a prototype. And you can see that we did use, excuse me, let's try it this way. We did use the same names. And we is connected them within the body of the prototype declaration. And then the parent node, pretty unsurprisingly, is uh, a material which has those same fields. And they're the same. Okay, so so far it looks just like our other one, except instead of fixed values, we've exposed it so that the interfaces are external and can be referenced so that this new node we're creating can have events routed in or events routed out that goes into us and that goes out as of the prototype interface. Okay, so given this connection then, let's edit the connect field and see what it tells us. So I will edit and looks simple enough. Okay, diffuse color connected to diffuse color and that matches that. So if we say the node field, <coughs> the name of the connected field in the parent node right there, well it will give us a choice of all of the things that our tool is able to find in the parent node. And we could see that not only did it expose the floats and the colors, but it colored them black or red, depending on whether they were legal. Similarly now, if we go to our proto field, which is the upper interface, the proto interface and what's available to our uh, node to be used, if we look at those guys, we see, well, they happen to have the same names, because we took that identical naming style, but it further is making sure that the input-output access type match that the SF color matches the previous node. And so, there you go. Long story short, it helps you pick the right thing. Now, if you're editing and you don't have the other one, you can stick in your new field name there and just keep going and ignore the error you might get when you uh, validate it and uh, if there was nothing available and then just keep going. So it won't block you from doing the right thing. Okay, so that's is and connect. And we do have some tool tips for those guys. Let's check those out. Okay, is tag is only allowed within proto declaration. And an is tag precedes any metadata tag. Okay, that sounds cool. And then, what else do we have on connect? 
Well, just what they are. They can only be within uh, the protobody and they must connect the names, match either the proto interface for the proto field or the actual node's field name for the node field. Okay? The jargon is a little bit cryptic, but it works. Now, I think we have enough time today to look at one more feature here about is. And this is a, a very common task, since when we're building new nodes, new prototypes, we're often adding to functionality of existing X3D nodes. I mean, that's what they do. Uh, then how do you do that? Well, ordinarily you do it with a script. And you wire up your script to connect to the interface and wire up your script via routes to modify things internally. Okay, so these next two slides describe that, how it works, and show an example. And uh, it turns out this is such a common pattern, such a common capability, that we put in a little extra switch. So I won't dwell on it in this lesson. We'll probably pick up here next time around. But here is the uh, button on the uh, proto-declare field that if you have to find a bunch of fields, auto-generate all of this for you and greatly simplify that task of making a customized script. So this is definitely a skill you want to have. The tool helps a little bit on that. The bottom line is you still have to design it and do it, but there you go. Okay, so where are we then? We're making great progress in this chapter. We've finished all of these. We'll uh, review, pick up next time with that specialty case of script node with isConnect. And then we'll tackle uh, some of the easiest and most productive parts, external proto-declare, and how do we instantiate this with proto-instance field type. All right, see you then.